Welcome to another Hardware News Recap. This week's pretty big. So memory suppliers are now facing a class action lawsuit. Never saw that one coming. Intel's got a 10 nanometer delay, which is hugely problematic. And we also have Intel documents showing X399 and Cannon Lake support on Z390. So lots to talk about this week. Before that, this video is brought to you by iFixit's brand new Manta driver kit. The iFixit Manta kit is a universal repair toolkit that includes 112 steel bits, redesigned from the ground up with longer necks for four millimeter bits, allowing more precision when working on components. The $60 iFixit Manta kit has everything from pentalobe drivers to Y drivers and standard bits. Learn more at the link in the description below. Quick GN merch update before getting to the memory supplier class action. We have these new glass crystals that have the GN teardown logo in 3D. And it's 3D laser engraved. They're available on store.gamersnexus.net. We have a small one here. We call it, I guess medium is what we're calling it. We have a keychain. And then we have a large glass crystal with a teardown logo that is suitable for hand-to-hand -hand combat. And you can buy it on the store, but also we are planning to use these as awards for manufacturers at events when they do something actually worthy of accolade, which is rarely. We'll probably give one out a year. But either way, uh, in all seriousness, we're looking forward to using them as awards. Uh, we, a lot of the partners do great things at shows, and we want to make sure that we give them attention. They have something to show for it and say, look what we got from the most critical outlet on YouTube. Those guys are assholes, but they gave us an award. So... Uh, That'll, that'll be fun. Uh, but also, you can buy it on store.cameraseconds.net. So first real news item, memory supplier class actions. We previously reported on Chinese government bodies investigating memory suppliers for what might be price fixing at the time is what they were looking into. We reported in our latest Ask GN, one of the two episodes, that memory suppliers claim to be making more money than ever and also more money than God in one direct quote from a source I spoke with. So they're doing pretty well right now for money. And just to be really clear, when we say memory suppliers, that's referring to SK Hynix, Micron, and Samsung primar primarily. There are three of them who make the memory that we all interface with daily. It does not mean Corsair, Kingston, G-Skill, Guile, any of the other manufacturers who buy the memory from the suppliers and stick it onto a PCB with a heatsink, basically. So this is strictly talking about the suppliers. There are three of them who control effectively 100% of the market. So this class action has come about because of the DRAM pricing right now. A quick few notes here. DRAM sales to server and enterprise groups are just fine. They're doing about 60% margins from some of the suppliers, which should give you an idea of why we don't matter. In the enthusiast space, if you're spending maybe a hundred bucks for a kit of memory, and you're hoping to spend less than that, then why would you sell to enthusiasts if you can sell to a server user hundreds of gigabytes, if not terabytes, for 60% margins? Kind of puts into perspective just how small our side of the industry is. And also, the same wafers have to be used for GPU memory, for phone memory, for flash in some cases where the suppliers create flash at some of the fabs, and also for uh, all the other different types of DRAM out there and cache memory and all that stuff for small devices too. So you're sharing a lot of space. We know for facts through direct sources that some memory suppliers make as much as $8,000 profit per wafer with the super fabs, the $15 billion super fabrication facilities as they're called, putting out hundreds of thousands or over 100,000 in the low end cases wafers per month at $8,000 profit per wafer. They're doing pretty well. So HBS Law is now filing a class action lawsuit against Micron, Samsung, and SK Hynix. And HBS Law is alleging conspiracy to fix prices for memory. And also note that this lawsuit, it's currently in complaint form. So there's no proof right now. Nothing is proven at this time. There's no proof that there is price fixing or collusion or any other foul play. There's just a lot of allegations coming from this particular law, law firm, which is a uh, filed class action lawsuit, currently a complaint, and that means that they're basically representing people who have purchased memory from these three defendants. So memory suppliers have been found guilty of collusion for price fixing in the past, but uh, the trouble is that in the past, as with other cases of wrongdoing in the industry, typically the company committing the wrongdoing profits more than the fine, and they end up in a market position of dominance where the fines are negligible anyway. Look at Intel and what they did when they 
worked with Dell in very special ways on the CPU side of things. So as a reminder, as of this instant, there's nothing proven and there's no active investigation or discovery. It's a complaint filed by a law firm. After a complaint is filed, just so you know, the defendants have 21 days to respond or motion to dismiss. We should know the response within a month or so, and then we'll see where it goes from there. The plaintiffs for the case allege that Samsung, Micron, and Hynix, quote, defendants combined and contracted to fix, raise, maintain, or stabilize the prices at which DRAM was sold in the United States from at least June 1st, 2016 to February 1st, 2018. Further stating that, quote, defendants conspiracy artificially inflated prices for DRAM throughout the supply chain that were ultimately passed through the plaintiffs and the class causing them to pay more for DRAM products than they would otherwise would have absent defendant's conspiracy. The complaint also states, quote, beginning no later than early 2016, through statements to investors and the industry, Micron called on Samsung and SK Hynix, the two other DRAM manufacturers, to engage in supply discipline. For example, on March 30th, 2016, Micron was specifically asked whether it would engage in supply cuts and Micron CEO, Mark Durkin responded that Micron would be foolish to be the first ones to take capacity off. Micron's CFO further confirmed that Micron would not unilaterally cut production. Quote, it's a really ill-advised move to be unilaterally cutting production. But at the same time, Micron reassured competitors that, quote, our focus is not on market share. Micron told its competitors that it would cease trying to take market share from Samsung and Hynix. So these are all quotes from the document, which is in some cases quoting uh, executives at Micron. This is more or less saying that Micron in its statements noted publicly that it would be moving its focus to profit or profit per wafer rather than to market share and expansion of market share, taking over more of the market. When you only have three suppliers and you're focusing on making as much money as you can and really squeezing those wafers for all the money they have, uh, it's starting to look a bit strange but uh, that's where the allegations come in. So this part is equally interesting and one I wanted to read for you. On February 1st, this is a quote, 2018, it was reported that Samsung and the NDRC, that's the Chinese governing body that we mentioned earlier, the governing body that began investigating for price fixing in December last year, which we reported on. They're saying that the NDRC and Samsung entered into a memorandum of understanding where Samsung agreed to increase manufacturing capacity. The NDRC investigation and agreement with Samsung caused defendants' conduct to change as they increased capacity and the class period came to an end after February 1st, 2018. DRAM prices fell as a result of this change in behavior. So we'll have to wait and see what happens here. As noted, there's no hard evidence yet. There's a lot of consequential evidence and things that look really fishy and strange given the timing of everything. I will provide some level of opinion here and say that it does not seem completely out of sorts that there would be some kind of foul play or very shady but legal play going on within the DRAM and memory supplier industry right now. They're making tons of money. Their stock prices are insane. If we can pop a stock chart on the screen, if we haven't already for Micron or Hynix, those would be the ones to look at. Can't really look at Samsung's because they make so much stuff that it just it becomes kind of invisible what's causing what. But Micron and Hynix are memory suppliers. First and foremost, you look at their stock charts, you look at the price of memory, they go up in unison. So basically the, the less product they make, the more money they make. So if there is intentional constriction of supply and there are three manufacturers in the world, that's potentially a problem if they're all doing it. But we'll see where this goes. It's still allegations, it's a complaint. This isn't actually an investigation or discovery at this time. We'll definitely be following the story though. Next news item is also pretty big. Intel has a huge 10 nanometer delay problem. Intel's delayed their 10 nanometer process once again. It's been years in the attempt at making now. Uh, so this time they're citing more production problems. Intel will instead be shipping 14 nanometer iterations later this year in the form of Whiskey Lake for client PCs and Cascade Lake for server and data center. Intel originally promised 10 nanometer parts back in 2015. However, multiple delays saw Intel move the target date to 2017 and now onward. 2017 became second half of 2018, which is not happening at this point. And as of now, Intel won't begin 
HVM until an unspecified time in 2019. For what it's worth, Intel claims to be shipping 10 nanometer in low volumes presently, but will not disclose what products and to whom they've gone to. In the meantime, Intel has effectively been stuck at 14 nanometers since 2014. Intel cites issues like aggressive scaling and density, as well as problems with their multi-patterning process for generating too many yield-reducing defects to ship 10 nanometer cost effectively. Intel admitted they bit off more than they could chew by increasing density 2.7x for the 10 nanometer transition. Comparatively, Intel only increased density by 2.4x for the jump to 14 nanometers. Intel is revisiting their 7 nanometer plans accordingly, learning from the production problems that 10 nanometer has been fraught with. Intel assures us and everyone else that they've defined fixes and improvements at this time and have a plan of action, but will take time to impact yields in a significant and positive way. The hiring of Jim Keller, a former AMD engineer, one who was largely responsible for the Zen architecture and I believe previously Athlon 64. Recent hiring of Jim Keller to lead the Silicon Engineering Group can be taken as a signal fire that Intel has to succumb to stagnation and essentially cede some advantage while they try and get back to grips with their 10 nanometer process and their competitors. So we'll see where this goes, uh, but two major items there that we just went over, 10 nanometers delayed, Jim Keller now works at Intel, having left Tesla and previously AMD, and to some extent Apple a long time ago. Also interesting from Intel, last week was the AMD news show, this one's the Intel news show, and the release notes for a recent version of Intel's Rapid Storage Technology, or RST, Intel suggested that the Z390 chipset would replace the current flagship Z370, and it will supposedly be compatible with Intel's 10 nanometer Cannon Lake, if it ever exists. Additionally, a new HEDT X299 successor is ostensibly coming in the form of X399. X399 is listed as supporting both Coffee Lake and Cannon Lake parts, and we can tell you from our own information that you can expect to see some new Intel motherboards coming up in the next couple of months. We're not sure when they'll be launching, but keep an eye on Computex. That tends to be where we see things like that. Computex, by the way, May 31st is when we'll be there. It goes from something like June 5th to June 9th, and we'll be on site reporting on everything. So make sure you subscribe so you can catch our coverage of the show. Also, as noted previously from the newsroom at Intel's website, Intel has hired Silicon Engineer and former Zen architect Jim Keller to become Senior VP of Silicon Engineering. Keller has worked at AMD, Tesla, and Apple. This move comes just ahead of the news that Intel is delaying its troubled 10 nanometer process yet again. This no doubt implies that Intel wants to assure investors that their 10 nanometer ramps have their full attention. Next, thanks to the volatile memory market, Samsung has unseated Intel as the world's top chip vendor. However fleeting their lead may be at 14.2% versus Intel's 14.0%. Regardless, this is a significant feat as Intel has held that spot for more than 25 years. Intel emerged as the world's top semiconductor manufacturer back in 1992 when you could purchase the Intel 486 processor. And there is one AMD news item. How could there not be after the last two years of AMD news items? AMD revealed that they have working 7 nanometer GPU silicon running in their labs in the form of Radeon Instinct with Vega architecture. The silicon is fabricated on TSMC's 7 nanometer process, as will AMD's future 7 nanometer graphics cards. AMD says that they are on track to sample the 7 nanometer GPUs and Epic 2 CPUs later this year. There's not much to say about this one yet, but it's interesting. There's a job listing on Indeed, the website that shows Corsair is looking to hire a product manager for displays, for gaming monitors. We've continued to see Corsair foray into many facets of PC hardware, everything from memory to power supplies, cases, and generally leading the charge with RGB LEDs, something that they're very proud of. And this also, by the way, includes chairs and soon open loop water cooling parts. So now they're adding monitors to that list. So the last news item here is just a couple of hardware sales we spotted. The first one's kind of depressing. EVGA's 1070 Ti SC Gaming is presently $510 after a $100 discount from B&H Photo and some other retailer websites that we'll link in the description below. 510 bucks? is pretty close to what they were supposed to sell for. So yes, calling it a sale from $100 over MSRP down back to basically MSRP is sort of disingenuous, but at least it's close to MSRP now. 
one of the better deals we've seen, if you can call it that, lately. Uh, basically, the 1070 Ti's were supposed were originally 450 to 510, so being at 510 is pretty close. Also, Corsair Vengeance LPX 8 gigabytes, uh, two by four gigabyte kit at 3,000 megahertz, currently 110 bucks, only two times what it should be, which is still a decent discount from where it was. So that's all for this one. You can find those links in the description below, along with everything else. As always, go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus, tops out directly. Go to store.gamersnexus.net to pick up one of our GN mod mats on back order or one of the new GN glass crystals with the 3D teardown logo. Subscribe for more. I'll see you all next time.